Hello, everyone. This is Ian Beckles, and welcome back to In the Trenches. Well, that was a lot of fun Yes, yesterday, watching the Buccaneers get that done. It's a victory Monday. Um, for the first time, I could sit here on a Monday and say that the Buccaneers outplayed their opponent. They outplayed the Packers yesterday in their house, all right? If you don't think that's a big deal, look at the history. And I believe since 1990, they've done it one other time. So it's a big deal. And the Bucs, I know I played there a lot every year. Okay, we didn't ever win in Green Bay. It's a tough place to win, regardless if they're good or bad. You know, usually I write down notes while the game is going on, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of times the notes are negative, all right? And at the end of the game, the Bucs might win, may win the game. So to me, it doesn't matter if you really win or lose the game. It's the way I assess the game. Look, watching that game for the first time, there wasn't a lot of negatives in that game. Did they play perfect? Nah, not even close. Do they need to play better going forward? Yes. But for once, I, I saw what we were trying to develop. I saw what the Buccaneers were trying to turn into. They're trying to turn into sort of a running team that knows what their running back, Rashad White, can do. They know what he can do now. They know what he's good at. And if you're somebody that keeps on asking for Bulls to get fired, I'm going to say this. <sighs> So next year you want to fire your head coach and then fire the offensive coordinator who's calling plays for the first time and then start anew? You want Baker to come back? If Baker's coming back, why would you want to do that? That's bad ball. So you, if you're going to bring Baker back, which a lot of people say they want, all right, and I'm okay with that, whatever that leads to, you know, everybody wants to have a team that's destined for a Super Bowl. There's not many of those out there out of the 32. Let's get that straight. You really just want to be a team that's contending. And the Bucks are contending. And to go to Green Bay at this time of the year when Green Bay needed to win that game makes me at least know that the Buccaneers are fighting for Todd Bowles. They're fighting. And they've been fighting all year. It has not been pretty. Not always. But they've been fighting. They've won three games in a row. You can win 50% of your games, but it matters when you have lapses and, and when you have positive moments, and right now the Bucs are playing pretty darn good football, all right? If you look at the NFL, the NFL is as cyclical as any other league, okay? It's such a funny thing, and as fans, our brains are cyclical. Uh, I asked some of my boys last week, hey, man, who do you think played the best football right now? I go, what difference does it make? They go, what do you mean? I go, it's going to change in two weeks. Okay, so that guy happened to be a Dallas Cowboy fan. So he wanted me to say the Dallas Cowboys are playing the best football. Anybody say that today? Baker Mayfield yesterday was more of an anomaly than what he is. We have to have to understand that, okay? We watched the other 12 games, and if you put it together, that's really what he is. Yesterday, he played his ass off. I mean, I don't know if anybody outplayed him in the league. There was a couple of guys that had big numbers, but watching that game, Baker was brilliant yesterday. He hasn't been brilliant all year. We have to understand that. So you have to watch yourself because the Baker Mayfield apologists, and there's there's two different you know schools of this. I'm somewhere in the middle. I didn't really want Baker to come here, to be honest with you. Now that he's here, I look at him, I go, he ain't that bad. Not that bad. We could win with him. I'm still somewhere in the middle. I'm not, okay, let's give him $20 million a year, and I'm not like get rid of the dude. And I'm still the same way with Todd Bowles, to be honest with you. But watch out when you look at one game and you go, oh, my God, look at that. That's what he could be. Well, that's not what he is, and that's the problem. Okay, let me give you a couple of names out there uh, this year. Actually, the last three weeks, all right? When I tell you football is cyclical, the Buccaneers five weeks ago, nobody would have put a nickel on the Buccaneers to go to the playoffs. Now the Buccaneers have a 72% chance of going to the playoffs. Things change, right? Five weeks ago or six weeks ago, the San Francisco is coming out for three losses in a row. Oh, my God, they're terrible. Are they? Dallas Cowboys, one loss, all of a sudden, they've been exposed. Baker Mayfield, he's finally found it. Dave Canales can finally call plays. It's cyclical. Let me give you some other names, all right? In the last three weeks, here some quarterbacks have balled out. Listen to the names. Zach Wilson, Tommy DeVito, Joe Flacco. Baker Mayfield, Justin Fields, Gardner Minshew, and uh, uh, Levis. Are any of those guys good? 
So watch yourself. It's not what you were last week. It's what your body of work is, all right? So let's not overdo that one game. It's not about that. In the meantime, we have to applaud what we saw yesterday on that football field because most of it was positive. Most of it was positive, not all of it. Defensively, there were some things we got to patch up still, but we've had that issue all year long, to be honest with you. I think we're better offensively than we are defensively. I said that last week, all right? And last week, I was like, I don't know if we're good or bad, and I knew that was there. It doesn't mean it's going to keep on coming out. That's the problem. Now, our offensive line, I'm hearing a lot of people that are so-and-so experts, so-called experts, talking about our offensive line and how they played so much better lately. I don't think the offensive line has played any better or any worse in the last three weeks. They've given the opportunity to run the ball. At the beginning of the year when I was like, we have to run the ball more, we weren't even attempting it. Now it makes it look like we should have been running the ball more. And you know, the last four games we've been running the ball efficient. I'm putting it in people, and finally we're winning the line of scrimmage, but you're giving the offensive linemen an opportunity to take over a game, and they're doing that, and that's beautiful. To me, the Bucs the Bucks offensive line should get the game ball from yesterday. It doesn't matter if they're asked to run block, pass block, the whole night. I'm seeing guys fighting out there, and I think, and I think that's beautiful. Now, defensively, Carlton Davis and Jamel Dean and, uh, you know, McCollum, I don't know what's going to happen at the end of this year. I don't even know which ones I are, are better. To me, McCollum's almost playing better than everybody else. You know, Carlton Davis misses a game. You don't really miss a beat. And we're going to get to Devin White in a second. Vita Vea playing seems like to be a, a, a story. Now Vita Vea plays. That's good. You know, it's, he's missing too many games. And sometimes I see him in there. He doesn't look completely healthy. And he really hasn't done a whole lot. He made a couple plays yesterday, but not not to the level of Vita Vea has, you know, accomplished. All right, let's get to Devin White. Uh, if you go back on the inner trenches and you and you listen to what I had to say, I was definitely not a fan of the way Devin White was acting. All right, and I don't know why anybody would be a fan of the way he's playing. And that's going back to last year when that one game where he was running around like he was uh, on mushrooms at the at the mall. I, I still don't understand what he was trying to do. Guy was blocking him, and he was just kind of looking around, walking, and the guy was just blocking him, and he wasn't attempting to get off a block. Like, he forgot what he was doing. There's a couple of times this year I watched Devin White. I don't think he remembers where he's at. Like, when you're aggressive, you got to be aggressive all the time, Devin. And Devin is a flashy guy. He'll make some flashy plays. but And all is not an overly technical football player. He reminds me of Quad Alexander a little bit. All right, so then they he gets hurt and he has all these issues and he wants to get paid money and I need to get paid this twenty million dollars and I'm the, I'm a Warner guy. Oh really? You put KJ Britt in there and all of a sudden you look better, not because KJ Britt is great, okay? Because he's more technical, he's more sound. Devin White will make a couple big splash plays, but he's not always where he's supposed to be. And to me, I like Britt. All right, for Devin White. To be a healthy scratch is the beginning of the end. That's it. So if you, if you can't use that athlete somewhere, I mean, even if you don't start at middle linebacker, put him in a nickel. To me, this was more about Devin White than it was a team. When they told Devin he wasn't starting, something happened. He said, you guys could kiss my entire black or something like that. Something like that. But that marriage is over. It's over. I don't know if they don't, you know, they, they probably don't need to cut him because they don't want to see him surface somewhere else, but I, I'll be shocked if I see Devin White in a Buccaneer uniform again unless K.J. Brick goes down or somebody goes down and then they'll have to tuck their tail and, and they have to go on from there, all right? The Bucks are 3-0 without Devin White. It's hard to say we, we need him back, you know? So that's where we are with the Devin White situation. You know, this pack team, that pack team was giving up 140 yards rushing, we have to understand this as Buccaneer fans, too. We're not a rushing team yet. You're a rushing team when you can rush against anybody. The last few games prior, those defenses were almost egging us on to run. You can't run the ball. We're going to run, and, and Green Bay did a little bit yesterday. They just came out. We're in regular, and they're in nickel. This 4-2. Boy, I was on some offenses. You come out of 4-2, we will never pass the ball, ever. 
We're running it every single time. So the Bucks aren't quite a running team yet, okay? But they're they're getting there. And what we're seeing with Rashad White, you know, we're seeing our offensive linemen using their athletic ability a little bit more. And we had Baker Mayfield balling out yesterday. He threw a couple dimes, you know. Godwin came out and did his Godwin thing. That's a Chris Godwin game, all right? Mike Evans, that's a Mike Evans game too. Big plays. You know, I think he, he tied the all-time touchdown record, I believe. So, you know, Mike Mike Evans, he's still going, man. We had this big conversation with somebody yesterday and talked about what the future of Mike Evans is going to be. And I was like, listen, you, you saw Julio Jones and some of these other guys at the end of their career try to go elsewhere, and it was almost sad. At the end of this year, if Mike, if Mike Evans doesn't end up Staying here, somebody's going to get a really good football player and a really good leader and a guy everybody can look and emulate. That's a big deal. If you put him on a young team, a young good football team, that's going to go a long, long way. So I'm still in the court where I don't think we should be resigning Mike Evans. I just don't think we're there as a football team. It'd be nice to see Mike play his last game here, but I don't think it's crucial. Very few do. And as far as his legacy... It doesn't really matter. Mike Mike Evans could pretty much do anything, and his legacy won't be tarnished here. Okay, it's not going to be tarnished by Todd Bowles or this organization or Jason Light or anybody because Mike Evans is an all time dude. And when you're talking about all time dude, I think he was a he's going to be eleventh all time in scoring, eleventh all time. I hear people ask, "Is he a Hall of Famer?" What are you asking? What are you asking? He's got Super Bowls, he's got all-time, he's got longevity, he's always in the game. What else do you need? That's a that's a no-brainer, okay? And not, not only is it a no-brainer, I think in the last 12 years, I don't know if anybody's been more underrated in the whole league than Mike Evans, all right? So I'm enjoying, you know, what I'm seeing now. Don't know how much is gonna, longer it's going to last. And I just... I just don't see the future being here, unfortunately. And, th- and that's, and that's a, a business thing, all right? But it was good to see, you know, the fellas go to Lambeau Field, not let the, you know, the elements bother them. It was only 40 degrees, so it wasn't that damn bad. I thought we played better special teams-wise. Um, Kamarda at, our, at times could be our MVP, all right? Kamarda's always everywhere. Coke Keith scored a touchdown. I haven't heard Coke Keith's name since the draft, okay? It's been a long, long, long time. And it was good to see, you know, some of your stars play like stars. Was there more than one Levante David yesterday? Because Levante David was everywhere. That's fun. You have to have fun watching Levante David, what he's all about and where he is on the field. Sometimes they go, don't tell me that's Levante, right there. You, there was one screenplay where the, their defender made a great block, but Levante sniffed it out immediately. Just a smart football player, all right? What I just said about Mike Evans, you can say the same thing uh, about Levante Evans. Levante David. Now, there's another name, an old buccaneer named David Moore. I, don't, I didn't know David Moore still was still playing. I thought he was commentating. Actually, this Dave Moore, um, I never heard much about the kid, to be honest with you. I liked what I saw. You know, the, the, the touchdown to David Moore was a misread by Baker. He shouldn't have thrown that ball. I almost was very, very close to going the other way for a touchdown. It was a misread. But it was good to see David Moore take it and take it to the house. Um, tuck it, David. Tuck it. Tuck it. We saw what happened to Ritter uh, when we played him the first time when he was celebrating beforehand. Tuck it away, brother. Imagine you'd have done that six inches before imagine imagine the, what you have to listen to just bro go five yards into the end zone just do yourself a favor just go five yards into the end zone and then no coach could ever complain ever again what are you celebrating at the three for it's just not necessary what good comes of the celebrating at the three other than let me tell you what bad can happen you get stripped or you can fumble this is what good could happen nothing Stop doing that. He'll never he'll never do that again. As a young football player, he will never do that again. Okay. Todd Bowles is saving his job. I hope everybody sees that. He's saving his job. Because once again, listen to sports radio this morning and listen to the experts talk about whether Todd Bowles should be brought back. At this point, 
I would say bring Todd Bowles back. Tell Todd Bowles he's coming back. Tell him. So we can tell the rest of his team, hey, guys, I'm coming back next year. Let's rock. Because right now he's dead man walking, kind of. Todd, did anybody think this team would be here right now? Did you? There were some people that were saying, ah, I think the Bucks are. But when I'm saying here, the people that thought the Bucks were going to be good were talking about 12 and 5 and 11 and 6. They're not that. And we don't even know what's going to happen towards the back end of the season. But to this point, I, I don't see any problem with them telling Todd Bowles he's coming back next year. I really don't. Look around. Look around how many people are getting fired after six games. These guys are fighting for Todd Bowles. Well, they're fighting for somebody. Canales, at the beginning of this year, was garbage. Yesterday, that Rashad White touchdown, that was that was your boy Canales. Okay, that was schemed. Jason uh, uh, from Radio Influence said the same thing to me. I showed him my, my piece of paper. I go, right here, Canales schemed Rashad touchdown, right there. You know, football, I know football. I go, that is, they set that up all game long. They set it up, and it was beautiful the way it opened up. You see teams like Kansas City do that. You see teams like Miami do that. You see teams like, teams like San Francisco do that. Now you're seeing teams like the Buccaneers do that. And I don't want to sit here and seem like, you know, I'm, I'm drinking the juice. But they've won three games in a row. They've finally beaten some formidable-type teams. And they put themselves in a situation where they couldn't be a better situation, to be honest with you. We're making progress as an offense. Defensively, we're about the same. I just don't never thought we were very good defensively. We're making progress offensively because Canales is starting to understand what he's about, understand what he has out there. So they're moving in the right direction, all right? Progress. All you should be asking as a Buccaneer fan is progress. That's it. It shouldn't be much more than that. Progress, getting better, heading in the right direction. And just watch out for yourself when you're evaluating teams or evaluating players that you're not doing it off of one game. Because one game can give you so much satisfaction. And Baker Mayfield gives people satisfaction because he's that rah-rah guy and he's that guy when it's fourth and two, let's go for it. It doesn't make you any better than the guy just that wants to punt. We'll get the end of it. The one thing I really questioned, and I'm going to keep on questioning, I'm one of those guys that does not ever come back on anything. I never come back, never. Fourth and three, on about the midfield, up 14 points, and the other team has no timeouts, punt the ball. I don't care if they got it or not. When they went for it, I go, I don't care if they get it or not. If they don't get it, there's four minutes left, and you got to give somebody half a field. I mean, you could score in half a field in 20 seconds. Didn't like that call. Especially, we're not great at fourth and shorts. We're not great at it. We got it. God bless. Game is over. I have to question it regardless, okay? Because down the way, that can get you get you beat, get you fired too. I didn't like the choice. And I don't care what the coach's name was. I just don't think that was good mathematically. This, I just didn't, it didn't make like a lot of sense to me. It all worked out. I'm not going to go crazy over it. I just didn't like, I didn't like the decision. I don't like his decisions ever f with timeouts. Ever. I don't get any of them. I don't know. It's, I, don't, I don't understand. But he's not good with timeouts, all right? But I'm not complaining about Todd Bowles right now. I'm certainly not complaining about Baker Mayfield. You can still complain a little bit about the defense, but offensively, we're hanging in the right direction. And there's not a lot of football left now. And here's the thing, and I'm tired of hearing it. And I I might have said it, but I'm tired of hearing it because it makes. I'm, I was thinking about it. Oh, well, if we make it to the playoffs, we're just going to get killed in the first round anyways. You're not watching football then. No way you could possibly be watching football. No way. No way. Every week, there's five five upsets. I'm going to tell you this. In the first week of the playoffs, there's going to be three upsets. Period. Why not the Bucks? Why not? They're heading in that direction. You say the Bucks win, you know, a couple of these next games. All right? When you lose six or seven, you can't say anything positive. When you mess around and win six or seven or five or six or whatever it may be at the back end, they think they're going to win. 
The Buccaneers are stepping on the football field right now thinking they're going to win the football game. And I'm not sure they were doing that earlier this year. I'm not sure they were doing it last year either. But I'm seeing a little a little swag coming, a little bit. We're not seeing as much JTS, thank the Lord. We're seeing some more out of Yaya Diaby. Nelson played a nice little game yesterday. We're seeing players here and there doing their thing. Antoine Winfield Jr. to me is one of the better players in, in the NFL. And we're starting to see the development. We're starting to see the development. And we're starting to see our stars shifting a little bit. Our stars are shifting. But I'm starting to, you know, the Rashad Whites, okay, the Kate Ottens are starting to grow on me a little bit. Kate Otten's starting to grow on me a little bit. Not quite yet. I'm not quite there yet. I'm not in the Otten camp yet. But every once in a while, I see, you know, I can see something there. I still think he's the number two tight end, but, you know, I see every game he's contributing, which is good. There was time early in the season where he'd be completely invisible. So there's a couple guys winning me over, okay? Kalijah Kansi, he's a flash guy, and he's going to be that guy. He's not a complete football player by any means. He's got a lot of work to do, but I can see the future there, you know? You can see the future, hope, probably with K.J. Britt, okay? You're seeing some of these other names, and you're hoping when you see an offensive line now that you really look at it, it's young. This offensive line can be put together for the next three, four years. That's how you become great. Having the same line, having Kate Otten there, having Chris Godwin there, having Rashad White there, having a known quarterback that knows the system. But for those of you that think that Todd Bowles should be fired, understand if Todd Bowles is fired, then Baker Mayfield is probably going with him. Okay? Probably. All right, Canales is definitely going with him, or he's going to be gone. Nobody's going to whoever comes in here and takes over Todd Bowles' job. If that happens, is not going to keep Canales. It's not going to happen. They're going to have their own people. All right, so you have to watch what you wish for. If you want Todd Bowles to be fired, then you probably don't want Baker to come back. If you want Baker to come back, you can't want Todd Bowles to be fired because they don't really they don't really go together. I'm not saying they're interlinked, but it just doesn't make sense to keep Baker Mayfield if you're going to change coaches again. doesn't make sense. And right now, Baker Mayfield, as well as Canales, is starting to get comfortable and starting to feel like it's second nature a little bit. And that's what it looks like on the field, which is beautiful. At the beginning of this year, I didn't really quite understand what they're trying to get accomplished. Now I see they're spreading things out. They're running the ball just enough. They're running enough screens. They're getting Rashad out in the, in the open. They're doing Chris Godwin type stuff. They're doing Mike Evans type stuff. Uh, you know, Otten's here and there. We got a little bit from number three wide receiver, which was nice for once. And that's the, that's the way you play offensively. We can't ask for anything more than that. So what we can ask for is that type of offensive play for the next couple, three games, and I think we're going to be in every game. We're in every, almost every game, win or lose, and I think that's that's a good thing because I don't know if we were that, I didn't know, I didn't think we were that talented. I still don't know if we're that talented, but I said this a few times, they're fighting for Todd Bowles, and you can't say they're not, okay? They're out, they're out there swinging. They're out there fighting. If anybody ever wants to hit me up, it's Ian Beckles uh, on Instagram, Ian underscore Beckles. Make sure you're listening to the other podcasts as well. And I'll be filling in for the great Mike Calta uh, this week, mon- uh, Wednesday through Friday. Um, well, I'll be talking about uh, cr- my people at Creative Loafing and how they screwed me out of $30,000. I'm not done with you, Creative Loafing. Everybody have a wonderful week, and let's celebrate. We'll be celebrating until next week. And then uh, we're in this, people. Enjoy yourself. Peace out.